Hello folks and welcome to Sound Codex. In today's video I want to show you how to visualize the EQ curve being applied by one of those plugins, those EQ plugins that have no display or spectrum analyzer where you can see the actual EQ curve. To do so I'm going to use the EQ curve analyzer by Verdom Audio. The link is in the video description down below. This plugin is provided under the pay what you want method, including for free. And if you think this plugin might be useful for what you do, consider giving a donation to the developers. So the plugin I want to analyze with you is the SSQ by Analog Obsession. First of all, we need to add two instances of the EQ curve analyzer. The first one should be the first effects in your effects chain. By default, it is set as a signal generator. As you can see here, the meter on our track is bouncing because this signal generator is producing impulses that are sent into the SSQ. Now we can add the second instance of the curve analyzer. And as you can see now, we can see the spectrum analyzer and it is set to auto sync to the first instance. What I mean by that is if we change the amplitude level of our impulses on the first instance, the second one will automatically set that value for us. On the top left corner, we have this number box where we can reset or rescale the Y axis as well for the X axis where we can define portion of the spectrum we want to analyze. Now we can toggle phase and as you can see we have all these spikes. This is not the phase curve of the SSQ. We need to fine tune this parameter by adding the latency introduced by the SSQ. Reaper shows this value on the bottom left corner so it's adding 16 samples of latency. We can add this value manually here. And as you can see now those spikes are gone or you can use this suggest button and it will automatically add the latency that your plugin is applying. Great, now we are ready to test the SSQ. Let's see what happens if I boost this band by 3 dB. As you can see we're boosting by 3 dB. What happens if I boost by 9 dB? 9 dB as well. And this is not a given because a lot of plugins like emulation of analog gear have non-linear responses. So if you boost your signal by 9 dB, it might not be accurate. As you can see, there is some latency between my movement on the knob and the curve response. That's because the FFT size is set very high. The FFT size is the number of samples uh, the EQ curve analyzer is taking to analyze the signal before giving a result. So every 8000 samples it will update this curve. So to make the EQ curve analyzer work smoothly we can decrease this value. We have smoother results but of course we have higher CPU load because the EQ curve is analyzing smaller chunks of audio in half of the time. Now talking about different behaviors between plugins, let's see if we can notice any difference between the Rare SE by Analog Obsession. What happens if we boost by 6 dB? Well, that's interesting. We're boosting by 6 dB but the signal in reality is boosted by 7.7 dB. So that's really interesting. Minus 6 dB, let's see if it is attenuating by minus 6. The answer is no, it is attenuating by minus 3.9 dB. This is very, very interesting. One last thing I want to show you is that you can compare snapshots of your EQ curve. So let's say that we want to compare this band, how it is affecting the phase at 3 dB and at 6 dB. 
So we set the boost level at 3 dB. We can underlay, set it to 1. Then we can freeze. Now we can boost the signal by 6. And now we can compare the two snapshots. So boost level of 6 dB, boost of 3 dB. How is the phase changing and other interesting things? And that was all for today. So if you found this video interesting, I invite you to leave a thumb up and subscribe to support my channel. Last but not least, please write a comment down below and let me know what did you discover thanks to the EQ curve analyzer. Maybe some strange behavior, some obscure response from your favorite EQ plugin. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in a future video. Bye!